How can one awaken? How can one escape this sleep? These are the questions that we'll be exploring and inquiring into in this episode. And this episode continues on directly from our previous episode, a Gurdjieff speaking about the four different levels of consciousness. It can be found in chapter 8, the video, but we'll just carry on. Or this uh, passage begins in on page 143. And as often occurs... In In Search of the Miraculous and Gurdjieff's work, we have this duality. We have sleep and awakening, unconscious and conscious. The nature of the individual currently, but also their potential and possibilities. And so, in the previous section, Gurdjieff discussed the four levels of consciousness and how one exists in sleep and has to make efforts to wake up out of sleep to reach the third state of consciousness and in this section Gurdjieff gives some more concrete examples of how one can awaken again beginning with these questions how can one awaken how can one escape this sleep and if you're interested in groups that we briefly touched on in the last episode and many of you have commented that you'd be interested in seeing a a book club Gurdjieff group um, begin and be built up I'll speak about that in much more detail at the end of this video, so stick around because there is a section in here where Gurdjieff's saying that without a group, nothing is possible. And so for those of you who maybe don't have access to a Gurdjieff group in your local area, but would be interested in that, stick around to the end. Let me know in the comments and I will will share how we can maybe begin tentatively building a Gurdjieff group in the comments. But this is where we begin this passage. How can one awaken? How can one escape this sleep? These questions are the most important, the most vital that can ever confront a man. But before this, it is necessary to be convinced of the very fact of sleep. But it is possible to be convinced of this only by trying to awaken. This came up in the previous episode and we spoke about it at some length that the only way that one can awaken is by realising that they exist in sleep. And Gurdjieff says here, but before this it is necessary to be, to be convinced of the very fact of sleep. And it's only with hard efforts, observations and attempts at awakening that we can really begin to understand for ourselves the, the depth of our sleep and the all-encompassing nature of sleep for ourselves and the world and people around us and how it's only someone who's spent many years and much efforts and energy exploring and uh, making efforts in the Gurdjieff work that they can really begin to wake up. So this is again to emphasize the point. Before you can attempt and wake up you have to realize you're asleep. There's another uh, passage in Ospensky's Fourth Way. The only way you can escape prison is by first realizing that you're in prison and without this thing uh, yeah there's no possibility of escape when a man understands that he does not remember himself and that to remember himself means to awaken to some extent and when at the same time he sees by experience how difficult it is to remember himself he will understand that he cannot awaken simply by having the desire to do so It can be said, still more precisely, that a man cannot awaken by himself. Again, more emphasis on the difficulty of awakening and that we can't simply awaken by having the desire to do so. We can't read a book like In Search of the Miraculous and then say, oh yeah, I want to wake up. And bing, you know, you're enlightened because that's not how it works. If you read Buddhism or Vedanta philosophy or Platonism, you realise that uh, these things take effort time and energy and at the end there now we begin to move on to this group dynamic aspect Gurdjieff says um, we can say it more precisely that man cannot awaken by himself but if let us say 20 people make an agreement that whoever of them awakens first shall wake the rest they already have some chance Even this, however, is insufficient because all the twenty can go to sleep at the same time and dream that they are waking up. Therefore, more still is necessary. They must be looked after by a man who is not asleep or who does not fall asleep as easily as they do or who goes to sleep consciously when this is possible when it will do no harm either to himself or to others. They must find such a man and hire him to wake them and not allow them to fall asleep again 
Without this, it is impossible to awaken. This is what must be understood. Here Gurdjieff's talking about the group dynamic, and these groups existed, of course, with Mr. Gurdjieff and also with Spensky, and then this lineage of... Um, uh, they sort of separated after both of these individuals passed away. There was the Gurdjieff uh, group, the Gurdjieff followers and the Aspensky followers. And like everything in life, uh, everything tends to split apart when the the, the founding um, essence of the teaching goes away. But I was a member of groups for many years when I first I was lucky enough to find the the canon, the works, and at the same time discover a group. So all through my early education, I was attending these Gurdjieff groups. And like I say, we'll speak more at the end about how maybe we can begin building one ourselves. It is possible to think for a thousand years. It is possible to write whole libraries of books, to create theories by the million, and all this in sleep, without any possibility of awakening. On the contrary, these books and these theories, written and created in sleep, will merely send other people to sleep, and so on. And this is something we find again and again that Gurdjieff says to his followers, don't think simply because an individual is in a position of power, say some politician or some governor or some CEO or executive of a company, don't think that just because they're in this position of status that they have any degree of awakening. Awakening doesn't come about by being in these positions of power and so Gurdjieff saying there you know people write books make music make films and do all the other sorts of things in art and culture but all this is done in sleep and all this will send people into deeper sleep. Now turn your attention to what I have pointed out to you before. A fully developed man which I call man in the full sense of the word should possess four states of consciousness. Ordinary man, that is man number one, number two and number three, lives in two states of consciousness only. He knows, or at least he can know, of the existence of the fourth state of consciousness. All these mystical states and so on are wrong definitions, but when they are not deceptions or imitations, they are flashes of what we call an objective state of consciousness. And this is what I've alluded to a few times in this video and the last one. Gurdjieff would say, man without quotation marks. A man that exists in the fourth state of consciousness is a man without quotation marks. You know, a true man, like he's saying here, a man in the full sense of the word should possess four states of consciousness. And so this is uh, an aspiration for us, a potentiality that each and every one of us who are interested in these ideas have enlightened beings are, are not not all over the place you know you don't meet them every day and when you do meet them if you have a a desire and a devotion to to these sort of ideas if you ever met an enlightened being you would do your best to befriend them and spend time with them and learn from them and someone who's awake and would be able to help you to wake up. You'd do well to spend more time with them and to converse and, and have communication with them because, of course, it's only going to help you. You need to be around individuals who are interested in waking up or even on this channel and this group that maybe will start. And through that, we have a greater potential for awakening. But man does not know of the third state of consciousness or even suspect it. Nor can he suspect it, because if you were to explain to him what the third state of consciousness is, that is to say, in what it consists, he would say that it was his usual state. He considers himself to be a conscious being governing his own life. Facts that contradict that he considers to be accidental or temporary, which will change by themselves. By considering that he possesses self-consciousness, as it were, by nature, a man will not, of course, try to approach or obtain it. And yet without self-consciousness or the third state, the fourth, except in rare flashes, is impossible. Knowledge, however, the real objective knowledge towards which man, as he asserts, is struggling, is possible only in the fourth state of consciousness, that is, it is conditional upon the full possession of the fourth state of consciousness. Knowledge which is acquired in the ordinary state of consciousness is intermixed with dreams. There you have a complete picture of the being of man number one, 
2 and 3. Again, an emphasis on the fact that without the third state of consciousness, self-consciousness, one can't move into objective consciousness. And Gurdjieff saying again there, if you talk to someone and say, oh yeah, there's another state of consciousness that exists that you have the potential to acquire and experience, but you don't have currently, people won't believe you and they won't be interested because they feel they have it already. And so that was that passage about Gurdjieff talking about awakening. All of these points need to be sort of digested and, and contemplated. And now I just want to speak briefly about this potential group that we could create. I have a Discord server, a book club Discord server, and there's a general group there, but there's also an In Search of the Miraculous group. So I feel that this would be the best place to have our Gurdjieff group, if anyone's interested. In the description, you'll find the link to the Discord server. I think I think it's invitation only, or I mean, if you click the link, see what it says, I might need to allow you in. I haven't uh, been very active there, obviously. Um, I've tried to get it off the ground a few times, but if you guys are interested in that, and let me just share a few things, why it's important, why a group is important, and particularly in this instance of this Discord group, because if people are reading the books, maybe they could share a quote in the group and then you log into the group and you see the quote and then that inspires you. Perhaps someone has a period of intense efforts where they've got the day off or the week off and they say, oh man, I've been trying really hard and this is what I've experienced and that's what I've experienced and it's because of this and it's because of that and this is what to watch out for. Or alternatively, someone can be, go back. What often happens if you go back to a place of your childhood, if you're around your parents, if you're around your old school friends, what tends to happen is the personality takes over and we become what we think they want us to be. And a period of deep and intense sleep, although it's not what we're after, we can learn a lot from it. We can learn that we was asleep. I didn't remember myself for a long period of time. And now I've come out of that um, environment, that condition, and I've realized how asleep I was. And you can share that in the group. And all of these things go together to inspire each other to awaken. And if you're doing it by yourself, you don't have these other nodes coming in of other people trying to awaken. And so, yeah, like Gurdjieff says, on on your own, it's impossible to awaken. And, and that's a pretty harsh statement, isn't it, if one is on their own. And so I can understand why some of you would be interested in having that group. So that's all for this video. I've got more Gurdjieff commentary coming up. And I'll say just for myself and my own work, my own efforts and experience, I often feel quite a lot of resistance to these videos before I begin them. And I have to address that, observe that and work through that in order to deliver this content for you. And I'm glad that you guys are um, yeah, finding value in it. Of course, it's not for anyone. People that aren't interested in Gurdjieff are never going to click this video. So it's great to see how the last video um, took off and many of you have found value. And so I'm going to continue sharing the Gurdjieff or Spensky content. Any questions are welcome. I'll um, yeah, be sure to answer them and maybe certain issues will come up in the group and I'll be able to speak on them. But all that's coming up. Go check out the group and I look forward to interacting with you in there. But for now, guys, take care and I'll see you next time.